Mm. Oh, look at that chunk of date. Mm. Oh, good one. Oh, these are good. Mm. Mm. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Phil here. In the spirit of our, uh, I think we called it quarantine cooking or whatever we called it, I'm going to show you guys how to make a super easy recipe that I love to make called, uh, I just call them Shan Yao Cake, but uh, also known as, I guess, Chinese Yam Sponge Cake. These little guys are super easy to make. They're really delicious, uh, a sweet little treat, great with tea. I'm going to show you how to make them. Let's take a quick look at our gear before we get started. What are we going to need to, uh, to actually make this recipe? Uh, pretty much a blender to mix all the ingredients together. And uh, I would recommend a pretty sturdy blender. This one actually uh, warms mine up pretty good. I think the juju dates and the thickness of the egg and the shanyao are a little taxing, but you'll see that when we get to that step. A steamer would be great. It's not a must have, but uh, I steam these as is recommended, but I have actually baked them in the oven in a wet bath by accident. I got my recipes mixed up and that worked just fine. So you won't need a steamer if you don't have one you don't have to rush out and buy one you can uh, wet bake them and i use these spring form pans as well for the um for the cooking uh, you, i don't think you need those but use a pan uh, it's going to be all about how thick we lay this for how long they need to to steam so that's all you need to get to get this rolling i should also mention another thing you're going to need is gloves when you're working with shanyao you're going to need gloves luckily in these times COVID, probably you've got tons of gloves laying around. So grab a set and glove up. We're going to process some shanyao. All right, so the first thing we're going to need to do, or the way I like to start, is to process these dates, and that is to get the pits out of them. If I could find pitted dried dates, I would get them, but they probably wouldn't be as good because they'd be too dry. The skin on really keeps, as you'll see, working with these. They're quite uh, juicy inside and sticky, which is why they're a bit of a pain in the butt to work with. I found this is the easiest way to pit them. Just cut them in half, uh, long, uh, well, I don't know if that's longitudinally or laterally, but cut them in half like you saw here. And then I just wiggle the, uh, I wiggle the other side out. And if it's too sticky, I just use the knife to kind of help it out. But be careful, obviously not to cut yourself and just pull that out. And then uh, I grab the meat and then put the pit to the side. And you gotta do a bunch of these, 60 grams worth for the recipe as shown. I'm doing a much larger batch today. So we'll just get all of our dates uh, processed like this. Once you've got a bunch of them pitted, um, I tried without chopping them once because I, I like to be as lazy as possible. And it didn't go well with the blender. It really, really taxed the blender. It even shut down. It had to cool off a little bit from the, uh, from the excessive workload of grinding up these sticky dates. So um, I always give them a chop and that seems to uh, do the trick. The blender can manage that. So uh, I would love to skip the chopping step, but uh, then I just give them a light chop like this and they seem to work just fine like that. Don't forget the uh, pits. I, uh, you can also just kind of chew on them while you work. It makes the work a little bit more fun, a little bit easier, having something to uh, something sweet to taste. Nope, yummy. All right, it's time to glove up and get this shanyao processed. Like I mentioned earlier, you're gonna need gloves to process shanyao for many people, the juice in this root, shanyao is actually a root, it does cause minor skin irritation. So you'll definitely want to use gloves. And it's pretty, other than these hairs that look like the hair on my leg, um, it's pretty easy to process. I just peel it as, as long a strip as I can um, from sort of halfway to the end. Just peel it all up there. Get it pretty good. It doesn't matter. We're going to have to wash this because of all the little hairs everywhere flip her around and give the other end a peel. So you'll just peel a big stick like this. If you don't like working with the big stick, you can always uh, cut it down to smaller lengths or whatever works for you. I just like to peel it as quickly as I can. So I do it in these pretty long lengths. I have chopped them before. I just found it made my peeling job more. And that's about it. I, I get it peeled. I throw this into a bowl off to the side and we'll be chopping this up after we give it a good wash. Don't chop it up right away when it's dirty and don't chop it up too soon because a lot of that delicious and super healthy juice will run out. So just hold off, put that off to the side, grab your next one and keep going until you got your 170 grams or whatever amount you do. So once we've got a good amount of the shanyao processed uh, and chopped, we just give it a, we're just going to chop it up a bit more before we toss it in the blender. So um, yeah, 
I just group it up together. I usually do it in chunks like, it doesn't really matter, it's gonna get blended, but again, giving it this chop does make it easier. That one time I didn't chop it, and I didn't chop the dates, my blender uh, conked out for a mandatory cool off period. So uh, I think it's better just to make things easier on your blender and give it a light little chop. Luckily my blender didn't catch fire or explode, but I just give it a light chop like that and we'll be ready to go. We'll just weigh out our ingredients and get them rolling into the blender. We're pretty much ready to get this mixed up. All right, so once we have the shanyao all chopped up, we'll just toss it on a scale and measure out the amount. The recipe calls for 170 grams. I'm going to do a much larger batch today, but I'll start with 170. And you can see, I think one of those pesky little hairs snuck in here. Let me look for it. Come on, I saw you. Oh, must have not been a hair. Must have been just some of that goo. So it's a little bit gooey, kind of um, slippery, as you'll feel when you start to try to move it. And uh, so we'll just pop it in there. Oh wow, I, there's no way I'm doing 170 gram. It's not a big enough recipe. I always do a, I always just do however much shanyao I have, which this time is a lot. I've got like two kilos of it. So anyway, just weigh it up. I've got, uh, this is about 450 grams right here. I'm gonna actually pile in uh, as much as my blender can hold, which I don't even know. So, um, and just use the ratio to figure out the only ingredient that matters, the dates you just chop as much as you need to match your shanyao. And the eggs, uh, you just have to come out with your egg to shanyao ratio and follow it. So that's not a big deal. Um, so you can do as, uh, whatever amount you want. And uh, usually when I buy those three stick bundles, I get about five cakes out of this recipe, but that'll vary depending on your pan size and whatnot. So just, you know, maximum flexibility. It's only three ingredients. It's super simple to make. Just have fun with it, cut it up, make it. So as I've mentioned, I'm making quite a big batch this time. So I've got my blender loaded up. Uh, I've never done this much before, so I'm actually pretty excited to see if this will all fit. Um, you add what you add your amount into your blender if you're doing the regular recipe, 170 grams. I've got uh, 1.7 kg. No, I got 850 grams in here, so I'm going to be using uh, 10 eggs. Woo! Big recipe. So we'll pop those in next and then we'll give it a gentle blend. So once you have the eggs in there and before you put the, the uh, dry dates, pop on your lid and we'll give it a little, uh, a gentle blend. We're not gonna go like full blast or anything crazy. I don't know if you're gonna be able to hear me once I start this, but I'm gonna keep talking and hopefully it'll work out. So yeah, just, I put mine on low and just give it a little bzzz. So it'll just, uh, it'll all work together slowly you can see the chunks going in i think i picked a good amount it's going to fit nicely i got an egg yolk still surviving there got to get that down and i'll just raise the speed up a touch you know i'm lazy i don't like to clean the lid so if i can avoid splashing the lid i will so i've got it up to just about three here and i'm just going to let that work around there we go start to really circulate and i'm going to I'm gonna just take her down and I'm gonna throw in some dates now. So since I'm doing a larger amount, I am actually going to uh, blend in the dates in sort of uh, three batches. I'm not gonna go for it all at once. So here goes the first batch. Hopefully the blender won't catch fire. We shall see. There they go. Yeah, I even have to hang on to it when I do this because it's pretty intense. Oh, and she shut down. Well, it shut down. So usually I just let it cool and it'll kick back on. We will see. Here we go. All right, so I'm back. Uh, I let the blender have a little rest. I'm going to put in my, uh, I've got to add in uh, 300 grams of dates for the particular amounts I did. I'm pretty nervous about this. I'm going to try a new strategy and I'm going to try and just pulse the blender off and on to try and prevent it from conking out on me. So here we go. Let's give that a shot. Give it a little break and then I'm going to resume. Give it another little break see if this works better. I don't know. I've never done a recipe this big, so maybe I just have to reduce the amount. Whoa. 
she actually jumped on me there. Oh, and she conked out again for another. I got a pretty good progress though. I probably should have pulsed it off. Anyway, I'm kind of having kind of having fun with this. You can see I'm getting a pretty good. Uh, let me get that in focus. Getting a pretty good. Uh, I don't know focus. There we go. I'm getting a pretty good uh, texture. I'm starting to like that. So I'm thinking that will work well. I'm going to put in the last batch after another 10 minute break. I'll go have some tea and I will get this fixed and I'm going to be steaming for a while. All right, so the last 100 grams are going in now. We're going to give that a shot and see if we can pulse it and this time prevent the blender from overheating. This is kind of an adventure here. So here we go. too much gently get it going I think a little faster might be easier not sure I don't want to overdo it no I like the slower one better we'll just give it little shots like this the slow one sounds really painful I'm gonna avoid that too slow not too slow not too fast okay that's pretty heavy-duty they're just about mixed in here. What an adventure. So I don't want to overdo it. I don't want to take another 10 minute break while I wait for it to cool off. And I tripped it. I got to wait again. Darn it. All right, here we are at our final uh, zap with the blender. We're going to get this thing done no matter what it takes. We're going to win. Here we go. Just keeping it nice and short. I should get the plunger. That might help too, but this is so sticky. I don't want that all over my plunger. Nice short bursts. I'm trying. I'm starting to go a little bit too long. We'll just keep pulsing. So I did end up using the plunger a little bit and you can see I still got some chunks in there, but I'm going to call this good enough. It's a really flexible recipe. So these little chunks are going to be just delicious and totally fine in the batter. It does not have to be, and actually you probably don't want it to be overly smooth because they add a really nice element to it. So I'm, I'm okay with this and we're going to get our pans ready and get the steamer, the steaming process underway so we can get this simple recipe done. Next step is I'm going to prepare, or I have prepared my little pans. These are little four and three quarter inch or 12 centimeter uh, spring form pans. I've lined the bottom with parchment, which I just, uh, I laid the parchment over and snapped this on and then I cut around with some trusty scissors. And I've cut these strips, this strip of parchment, which I'm going to lay on the side and then I'm going to glob our batter into there. So I'll, I'll show you how I do that. You could also just grease these up real good. I've done that before, that works. Just when I'm doing a lot, I prefer to use the parchment because I can reuse it over and over and over for the whole time. And I, and you know, it comes out really quick and really easily. Um, but you could also just do grease them and you don't need to use four and three quarter inch. You can use any size pan. We're only going to be filling this about half, maybe a little bit more. So they don't even have to be that deep. You can't fill them too deep or they take forever to steam. All right, let's get some batter in here. So here's my pan with the, uh, with the side liner in it too. I have to tell you, I'm pretty, uh, I'm, even myself, I'm impressed. I don't usually do it this neat. I had these already from last time. I just kept them. So I didn't even cut these to size, these sides. So this is just a really lucky shot. So let's glob the batter in here and I'll show you how I fumble through that step. It's, it's a little bit sticky and fun. Let's check it out. All right, so let's get some batter into these pans so we can get these into the steaming environment so wow this is the most batter i have ever had so my normal uh normal way of doing this is just glom a little bit in uh, it's super sticky as you can see so it's not like it's going to just fill up the whole pan right away i try to be neat with it because it is super sticky i don't really want it all over the countertops okay and just dab it around give it the old tapa tapa and I hope that's not trademark. 
And that's it for that guy. He's ready to steam. Let's get this guy in. So if your paper doesn't cooperate right away, don't worry. Once this batter's in here, the batter is going to totally bully it into position. So uh, just put some batter in and then, you know, tuck it over like that. Scoop up your little extras and yeah, see how the batter just kind of pushes it out to the edge because it's so thick. It's like almost like a paste. Give it a little dollop, dollop, tapa, tapa. I'm going to put a little bit more. Be careful not to go too thick or they will take forever to steam. I mean, it's not the end of the world. You just got to steam them longer. You can use your, um, your bamboo skewer or a toothpick or whatever to check on the uh, state of the inside to make sure it's done when you pull it out. It's that simple. So there they are, ready to go onto the steamer. Let's get to that. So on your steamer side, obviously you just need a little pot of boiling water. Gently boiling, doesn't have to be, uh, doesn't have to be going crazy at all. I'll probably even turn this down a bit because it will, it'll pick up a bit as the steamer um, kicks on. And pop your cake on. If you've got a double decker, double decker up. If you cut your papers too big for the double decker, don't worry, I always do that. I just squish the paper down and there we go. So leave that on the, uh, we'll leave that on for 30 minutes and we'll check on them. So you're gonna let your uh, cakes cool for about 10 minutes or until you can touch them. And then just pop them out of the spring form pan like so. Um, I've used the parchment, so I'll just unwrap them and put that off to the side. Uh, that's really handy. The parchment's super handy when you're going to do a, a larger batch because you can just simply reuse it. I'm just struggling a little bit with my one hand here. I got it. There we go. And you see, we've got a perfect cake. Uh, I pop it up on the rack to let the bottom dry. Because they're steamed, it'll be a little moist on the bottom. And just let it cool there for a bit. And uh, you can pop them in the freezer uh, or the fridge later if you don't want to eat them right away. They are delicious, warm, um, and this will be ready to go. All right, so there we have it, a uh, beautiful shanyao cake, uh, sponge cake. These are pretty uh, light and fluffy, but also pretty hearty. As you saw, plenty of eggs. The shanyao is super healthy. They've got dates, uh, keep you regular. This is a fantastic snack. Um, you can pop them in the fridge in baggies. You can throw them in the kids' lunch. You can have them with tea. These are, um, yeah, one of my favorite snacks to make. Uh, you can make a ton of them at once. You can make them as per the recipe. And if you liked the video and you thought it was useful, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you'll be the first to hear about our latest videos and click on that notification bell. Have fun, enjoy, drink tea, and as always, keep steeping.